Right, good evening, people. My name is JR and I am the FR Guna. I'm joined here by Marcelo, by Kerb, by Nabir. How are you guys this week? You well? All good, thank really? you, bro. Yeah, I know it's, it's been it's, it's been yeah it's been a tough start to the week, man. We're gonna call this one the therapy session, man. We're gonna call this one the therapy session. But yeah, let's let's start there anyway. Obviously, with the Crystal Palace result, um, three 0 defeat. <sighs> Boy, what can I say? I mean, after a number of weeks with confident football, free flowing football, we saw against you know the likes of Villa, Leicester, and then we went away to Crystal Palace, and then it just all went wrong. Um, Marcelo, talk to me. What what went wrong, bro? Uh, I just think Patrick Vieira uh, outdid Arteta, to be honest with you. Um, I think that he uh -huh. just had his side more ready for the game. I think he knew that we haven't maybe been pressed relentlessly in a while. Uh, some other teams maybe showed us a little too much respect, but Vieira knew how to sort of put that extra pressure on us and we just weren't ready um mm. you know i don't i think the players are more to blame um but everyone everyone was just off it man it was just no one expected it to be that bad we all knew it would be tough but i just you know i want to blame us but i also just have to give viera credit because he got them he got them playing really really hard from the first whistle so yeah. I just think there was a mix of lack of preparation on our end and Vieira getting them more hyped than us. See, you, 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 we're going to talk about Vieira, but you mentioned the players that they're more to blame than Arteta, would you say? Or, you know, is there not, can we not kind of hand out slight blame to the, to, man, to the manager or is it just the players just didn't turn up? Absolutely, you can. You know, Arteta definitely deserves some of the blame. Um, oh. He could have gotten the players more ready mentally for the game because they just didn't look like they were as hungry as as palace but when you see party giving away five yard passes Tavares defending the way he was like there were so many mistakes that you just should not be expecting players at that level to make and that's not an arteta so in terms of getting mentally prepared for the game yeah you can absolutely blame arteta um, but it's much more so just silly lack of focus and just poor mistakes that they could have avoided for me. I hear you. I hear you. Um, when, I, when I saw that, what's his name? Gene, is it Gene Mateta? The, the dangly striker mm -hmm. for Crystal Palace. When I saw him get on the, come on the pitch, I was thinking, do you know what? This is gonna, he's going to be a problem because he just looks awkward. Because is it fair to say that we got bullied? On Monday, um, yeah, I'd say so. Um, we were out fault, outworked, um, outplayed mm. in every department. If I'm being honest, um, I think Marcelo hit the nail on the head. Really, in terms of, yep, a portion of the blame definitely goes to Arteta. In terms of you know for the player not you know not preparing the team and getting them fired up because that that was what was so um, disappointing um, for me was the fact of we had the whole weekend so there's no excuse we had longer in terms of preparation after international break than any other team we also had the thing of being able to sit there watch all the other results come in over the weekend and know how big a three points. Yeah these would be for us if we could secure them and it was the manner from the first from the first minute we just did not look at it yeah. and that was what was really disappointing because if we'd have started fast and looked like you know we were trying and um things just weren't happening for us because you know everyone has off days if things just wasn't happening you know we, we was have, make creating chances and just couldn't put them away or whatever then fair enough in it but it was just a oh. simple fact that none of that happened we didn't show any kind of readiness um, for this game. And we didn't show any kind of urgency as to what this result could potentially do for our season. Um, and even down to mm -hmm. when we lost, went a goal down, even then the two down, I just didn't feel any type of urgency. I really didn't. And in that first half, I was actually thinking, this could get embarrassing. 
Yeah. Which is not something I've actually said for a little while um, in terms of our performance, because the one thing I wasn't expecting, like I think you touched on, JR, I expected them um, to come at us and whatever, but I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. Um, yeah. I was expecting, you know, us to meet meet the challenges head on. Um, and at least, you know, even if we said like, OK, first 15 minutes, Palace are going to come at us or whatever. I even then had a bit of expectation that potentially we could be solid enough um, as a team and a unit to um, at least try and, you know, withstand some of the early pressure, which was, you know, going to be inevitable with Palace being at home. But it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot's been made of the obviously the KT injury as well um, before the match. The fact that he didn't start, um, the fact that Tavaj start. There's been a lot of um, criticism of Tavaj's performance. The fact he had to come off. Um, in terms of, are you? Would you? Would you play him in the next match, um, Nabir? So would you stick to that same formation? Um, would you have Tavaj out on the left? Um, against Brighton, would you would you keep him in that first team or would you look to change it? Well, yeah, Tavares, man. I just had to hear because this Tavares, man, you're too posh for me. Uh, <laughs> that's the right pronunciation. I'll be oh, told. is it? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, well, yeah. yeah. That's not me there trying there to be special. No, I no, think no. Yeah, this guy's trying to be special, man. But um, <laughs> <laughs> show us, trying to be cultured. And, and, nah, and bro. But yeah, listen, look, um, my worst fears. Because I've always been told you're the negative one here. You, you know you're not being positive, and and my worst fears came came to light on Monday. Um, and the squad is thin. The squad is thin, and um, yeah, you know we'll talk about Arteta a little bit later in regards to I did say this. You know, st- streamlining the squad in January and cutting wage bills and stuff. I said, look, we've got a big six months coming in. This is Arsenal. Even before Arteta's reign, we, we've been littered from injuries from the last maybe even 10, 15 years. And, um, you know, this Tavares, he has to start against um, against Brighton. Uh, we've left ourselves very light there. What, one thing I would say that is um, really concerning is Kieran Tierney. I don't know if it's Arteta, I don't know if it's Arsenal, but it just shows that, you know, the lack of um, authority and the lack of um, foresight because we know that Kieran Tierney, you know, carries quite a lot of injuries. It, it, mm. It's known. He's our player, but as a club, you need to kind of work around that and think, you know what, he is a bit soft in regards to getting the injuries. Don't let me disrespect, but he does get a lot of injuries. Now, mm. why is he playing two 90-minute games, friendly games for Scotland. Where's Arsenal coming in and saying, Lil, Steve Clark, this ain't running. Or Tierney, something has to give because yeah. Klopp and Robinson, there was no messing about here. It was, oh, Good he's point. injured and he's injured. And this is the thing of, you know, the thing that gets me quite, quite upset. We've got a thin squad. You streamline this squad down. You've basically got one left back. Either say to Scotland, look, you can have him for 90 minutes or playing 45 and 45, or the next time I'm going to make it a bit difficult for you. Clubs do it all the time. Ben used to do it all the time. Mm-hmm. All clubs do it all the time. We've now gone in, I don't care. and even for Tierney, if Tierney tells me now I want to play the 90 minute friendlies, it's going to be long for him. Personally, if I was our I think you're making it very uncomfortable. And now look what, what's happened. We've been bitten our ass now. He's injured. Mm-hmm. You've thrown Tavares in. Everybody's coming at Tavares. It wasn't a great game from him. But you've got to remember, his last game was at Nottingham Forest. The confidence is low. You're just chucking mm-hmm. man in. He's not, again, this is your signing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No experience. You said, I want to go for this young guy. So you've got to be ready to think if Tierney gets injured, can I trust this guy? This is your guy now. Oh, no. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, he's ready to come in. So he's come in. Of course, he's going to take, it's a tough game. Uh, Crystal Palace away. You're not putting him up against, but he didn't even do well at first, to be fair. But, you know, He's gonna take a couple. He's gonna take a couple of games to get into it. We have no choice but to play Tavares. He wasn't even the biggest criminal. There were two biggest criminals for me that game. One was people were talking about Partey. Yeah, he did give the ball away, but I think Jaka. I don't know if he had an invisible cloak. I don't know what happened in the first twenty-five minutes because I just didn't see him there. Um, Odegaard and Lacazette. No matter 
on that game, this it, it, they should get a two out of ten each. Now, I'm not going to write Odegaard off because uh, he's been, he has been fantastic, but that yeah. was a shocking performance mm-hmm. against Palace. What was happening? I could see Partey is getting attacked and pressed when he does get the ball. Odegaard and Lacazette, these are the focal points to hold the ball up, slow it down and bring others into play. The ball was coming straight to Odegaard, coming straight. He had the, his first touch. I, I don't know what happened on international three, but he was poor. Lacazette, oh, horrible. I don't, I, I'm we're now gonna, just lost. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get to we're Lacazette. Getting to, but, we're getting to yeah. Lacazette. But yeah, in, in regards to, I'm going to move on quickly, but it, what your point again, is it Arteta's fault or not? I always worry with Arteta that when you've got too much time, you try to be a bit too clever. I don't know why you've had Martinelli and Saka and it's working. It was fantastic. Uh, and you bring, you swap over Smith Rowe for that. Again, yeah. I, 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 but, 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 I but, but could you not say, because I, I was thinking about that, why didn't he start with Martinelli? But yeah, do you think not? the fact that KT was coming into the squad, do you think that he thought that Emil Smith Rowe would complement um, Tavaj a lot better, maybe defensively than Martinelli would, because I think yeah, Martinelli, Martin, no, you don't, you don't Martinelli think that's a... works though. I don't. What he no. has a, he's a worker, man. Yeah, I don't think yeah. he's any liability on either end of the pitch. To would you have started with him, then, Kerr? If I'm being completely honest, when I saw the starting lineup and yeah. I saw no Tierney and no Martinelli in the starting lineup, I was yeah. a bit. I I looked at it and I thought. Hmm. And and then when I saw Zaha in their starting lineup, I thought, wait, hey, you know what? This could be a long day. Yeah, like, yeah, there was yeah, just yeah. something in the air for me when I saw that um, starting lineup. I thought because I didn't even hear about the teeny injury until like during the game, so I didn't even know. Like I put the game on and or whatever, I saw the team sheet come out just before the yeah, game. That was shocking. And didn't that's... yeah, I didn't realize why the teeny was injured. And I was like, I don't okay, that's unexpected. But you know what, Karen, you're right. But I but listen, I tried to dress it up. It's been three days now or two days now. Mm. It's not mm. making me feel better. That is no. unacceptable from Arsenal Football Club. To yeah, send it was. Your left back out, who you know gets injured all the time. You mm. have gone out of your way to ship people out, to streamline this squad, which I don't understand why you've done this. But anyway, people said, let's, let's back him. You've done this. And mm. you are not having a word with Scotland. This ain't the qualifiers that they're going to play in Ukraine. Yeah, this is talk. friendlies. And now look what look what has happened. Nobody come on the phone and say, listen, Eva, Tini, you're injured, you're not going. Look mm. what has happened. We're talking about Tavares. We're throwing the young boy in there. Yeah. Bro, it's a mess. So it's it's a complete mess. This is the time you need to hold your nerve. And we're doing stupid things like this. Like honestly, that one has really I need to ask who's in control here. Because mm. you, Tierney, we know two 90-minute games. Two. And they're friendlies. And now look, he's out. Yeah. For the no, season thanks. as well. Not even just for like a couple games or something. For the whole season. Like, Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's, that, that was a hard one to take. A hard pill to take. Marcelo, I just want to ask you. I know you um, were speaking about it um, briefly on your page in, in regard to the Tavaj situation. Um, would you look to play him against Brighton? Or would you look, explore the idea of you know, Jacka dropping in or the or to, if Tomiyasu was fit, Tomiyasu playing out on, on that left side or would you stick to Tavaj playing? I mean, Nambe did make a good point, the fact that he hasn't played many games, I think since December, um, mm. his, Jan, his Jan, last yeah, run of consistency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, you know, in the emotion of the game, I was saying... It's very unlikely that Nuno's going to start on Saturday. But then when I gave it a little more time, I think, like Nabir said, I think he probably has to because there are a few possible scenarios here. The one you just mentioned, Shaka left back. I do not ever want to see Shaka playing nah, left back again nah, at this club, yeah. ever. Nah, like, yeah. it's Arsenal. We should never have our slowest player playing fullback <laughs> ever. Yeah, um, that's not even a criticism so it's, of yeah, Shaka. It's not Sunday like, league. Yeah, it's not even a criticism of Shaka. It just should never happen. And so the issue now is what a lot of people, I was super surprised. I put a poll on my page and, and most people voted that we switched to a back three. And while I okay. can see 
the benefit in that, I think that to do that after 31 games of yeah, playing with a back four, I just think that's such a big risk. So yeah. to, Tomiyasu isn't going to be available till after Southampton. So he's not going to be here for oh, Brighton yeah. or Southampton, meaning the only other scenario would be White plays right back and Cedric goes to left back. But yeah. Arteta put Shaka at left back over Cedric last year. <laughs> so he's not going to put Cedric at left back, which means Arteta's probably going to have to put Nuno at left back again. Um, and so I think I would too, because I don't want um, someone playing left back that Arteta doesn't trust there in Cedric. And I think that Nuno can still redeem himself because like Nabir yeah, said, also everyone was shit. The whole team was shit. Yeah, fuck. So yeah, it's, I didn't think he was any worse than anyone else in particular, really, in that exactly. first half. It, being it, honest. Just, it just looked bad the first mm. goal because he ducked, which that was inexcusable. That was yeah, bad. yeah. But but everyone was off the pace. So I think with him being so young, and he also like he's barely played this year since you know that little run in the first half of the season, I think that the best possible thing to do, because we're going to need him, even if he doesn't play against Brighton, we're going to need him. So yeah. I think it's best that Arteta shows him some faith so yeah. that he can get that confidence back or else he'll yeah. play even worse when we eventually do need him. Yeah, And it's the thing that will, will least um, disrupt the team as well. Like exactly. if you play him there, like it's a little bit of, like you said, he's going to, by by giving him some minutes and stuff, hopefully you can then find because you, when you think about it, when when Tierney was out during that period, yeah, Tavares sure. or Tavaj wasn't um, <laughs> that bad, was he? Like there was a period where we were all saying, "Hang on, does Tierney even get back in the team?" Exactly, when he was yeah. playing that well, you exactly. know. So, and then obviously he had the bad game against Liverpool. His confidence right. then was shot from then, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I don't yeah. think we we've seen him much since then. So this was probably his first appearance since then or maybe not in forest or something in the cup but um yeah so his confidence and everything and you you need game rhythm in it especially at this end of the season um you need a bit of game rhythm and i think that's probably where arteta hasn't helped himself a little bit because although although look we do, we don't want to see a lot of tinkering yeah and we wanted to see a lot of, a bit of consistency but i still feel like players in your squad like your sambies like your um tavares is people like that are people that you can still use to bring to bring on and close out games and things like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that, you can still show trust and faith in these players by trusting them to do a job. Look, we need you to come on for the next twenty minutes. Do a job on this player, that player, whatever the case is. Help us see the game out. Mm. But and it gives them a bit of confidence, and they and they're getting a little bit of minutes and a bit of game rhythm. You know, yeah, so then yeah. when they're next asked to step in from the start, they're not so cold. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. like, look at Tavares. You know, like. The first whatever 15 20 minutes of that game he was having a bit of a hard time but he would one he weren't expected to play until obviously right before the game and two like we've all mentioned already confidence and no match with him so i think him staying in that position arteta giving him a bit of um a sign of faith by picking him and showing him look you're my guy um we're gonna rely on you and we're gonna have to try and run with that because the one thing like what Marcelo touched on is, I don't want to see Shaka anywhere near left back. So, and I feel like by playing Nuno, um, Nuno Tavares there, we can then, it allows us to still be able to keep Shaka in midfield, yeah, which yeah. doesn't destabilize us so much, destabilize yeah. us so much, because we're going to be losing part A, which yeah. is already massive. Yeah. yeah, it's already massive. So by not having Shaka in midfield as well, then straight away, like our whole midfield is gone. Yeah, shot to be. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Good, some good points raised there, Kern. And I think one of the key things, um, especially for Arteta, um, in this period, is to, you know, we were talking about Tavaj's mental um, stability and his, his frame of mind now, and just kind of understanding that he's a young player. And I think we perhaps have seen in the past, um, as some have alluded to that Arteta's man management hasn't been the best with dealing with young players. You know, the likes of Gunduzi, um, it, it, we, we could argue the case. 
Um, the fact that he was kind of just loaned out and just basically shot out to go to Marseille. Um, maybe even even the Bamian. We don't know what 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 happened in that situation. I know Nabeer's probably smiling inside right now, but you know, definitely it, not. It, <laughs> not <now. laughs> it, it could <laughs> it could be questioned. So yeah. I think the good the, the the right thing for Arteta to do in this situation is show some faith in Tavaj, Tavares, whatever you want to call him. So, yeah, hopefully he gets an opportunity to start against Brighton. We, we have to commend um, Vieira, though. Um, you know, we, we played Crystal Palace twice this season. Um, we've drawn once. They've beaten us, obviously, on Monday. Um, and I think on both occasions, to be fair, they deserve to beat us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. A lot of a lot of people have mentioned the idea of if it doesn't work out with Arteta, um, perhaps go in with um, Vieira as a future Arsenal um, manager. W w what's your sentiments towards that, Kerr? I don't think he's doing his um, chances any harm. Oh. To be fair, I mean, obviously he's been overlooked in in the past and whatnot. Obviously, even oh. just looking at Arteta, we have more ex experience than Arteta when um, Arteta was given the job. So, you know, he's, he, he's done his um, apprenticeship in management. Um, he's been around, you know, a couple of different countries and things like that. Mm. He's been given a chance at Palace. I think he's done exceptionally well at Palace from when you think of the position that he was taken over from. He was one of the favourites to be sacked at the beginning of the season. When you mm. looked at Crystal Palace's squad, a lot of the players that they let um, that had left them in the summer, uh, he recruited very well. Got a lot of um, young players from you know all different different teams and whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Showed, he, yeah, he showed showed a bit of um, showed a bit of now uh -huh. in the old recruitment department because a lot Definitely. of the players that he was bringing in, I don't think anyone else in the league was sitting there going, "Oh, oh, look." Crystal I thought Palace we should have got, got Elise at the time, but then the likes of Gene Marteta, he's been playing. Well, at the moment, he's he, Edward is a decent player from Celtic as well. He, he's had he's got a lot of young, you know, mm -hmm. French. Even players. Gallagher, Gallagher weren't yeah, Gallagher about well. last season, right. and he was at West Brom last season. Yeah, and yeah, no one yeah. was speaking about him the way they're speaking about him this Real season. Talk. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of credit goes to Vieira with that as well. Um, along with, like you said, a lot of the other players, even down to you can tell, even like your Zaha rumors completely seem to have dead in the water now. He ain't trying to itch out to go nowhere mm. and things like that. Because, you know, you, when when you've got a player or a manager, sorry, um, that's managing a group of players with the CV and, you know, the, the respect that Patrick Vieira commands um, in a dressing room, you know, uh, we can only dream of something like that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at the yeah, moment, yeah. to be fair. But, um, yeah, in, in in that respect, I, I think he's definitely doing himself um, justice in the job that he's doing. And if he continues going the way he is, I don't think it will be an unpopular opinion for uh, many Gunners to be putting him in their list of candidates yeah. if and when the time comes for Arteta. No, fair enough. And Nabi, I want to hear your thoughts on that. But also, I want to hear your thoughts on what Emery, I think he said today, um, in, in terms of, you know, the fact that Arteta um, is doing a great <laughs> job. Um, however, he's been given time by the fans that mm -hmm. he felt that he did not get. Um, yeah. do, do you agree to these sentiments? I've said this. I've said that. You know what? It, it's, it, it, <laughs> Kerr, what you were saying about Patrick Vieira now, you're spot on. But I mm. think I've now realised that the fan base of Arsenal Football Club are, are not that clued up. They they would still, no matter everything that you've said, would say, I'd rather go with a rookie or they might like the look of someone or maybe the look of their hairstyle or the accent or the way they talk. Because sometimes I'm Come thinking on, the fan... No, bro, I'm being real because the fan base sometimes... Because Kerr is spitting pure facts with what he said. And I still think a lot of Arsenal fans would be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know about Vieira. But coming mm. back to what Emery said... I said it, and it's, it, it's, 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 it's facts what he said. He's been given a lot of time to turn it around. It seems that when something goes wrong with Arsenal Football Club, it's Wenger's fault or Arte, or Emery's fault. When something goes good, then Arteta gets the praise. I, I've watched this for like two and a half. It's always, this, if something goes wrong, oh, well, he's just cleaning up. Look at the mess he's been left in. If something goes bad, oh, well, 
and it's consistent. Emery, no matter what we say, he was. I, I think I got slated on this podcast, to be fair, and I've had it in other group chats when I said, listen, <laughs> Arteta is our guy, fair play. Let's just, I, as I said, let's, let's back whoever the Arsenal manager is. But this sort of bias and the disrespect that Emery got, I'm not saying that we weren't getting peppered with shots. I'm not saying these, these stats weren't there. But yeah. I look at the hard facts. You've come in, the first manager after 22 years of Arsene Wenger. He's run that club from top to bottom. The same thing you've seen at Man United. Moyes had no chance. When you come into a new home and the guy, you can still smell the guy's fragrance yeah, 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 and, and your yeah, yeah. missus has still got his, it's still got his, <laughs> you know, his t-shirt. In, in the cupboard t-shirt and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bro. <laughs> You, you know what? It's going to take a while for you to be the man of the house because you're going to have to live. I don't really like that soul for that. You've just come in. Now, if your missus, you know what I mean? If your missus or someone has been there and they've been with someone else and then the, uh, the house is gone, you can uh, do that. And that's what I've said. What Emery achieved in the first season, whether people cuss it or not, we're not in Europe this year, first time in 25 years. We said, oh, this is a good thing so we can, you know, go closer. This guy's taken over Wenger. We've had Torreira, Mustafi, Xhaka at his best, worst. That's when he was in the pomp of his foolishness. And this guy took us to fifth, a point of top four. And Europa League apparently is one of the most annoying cups to be in because you're playing 862 games a season. Do you know what I mean? And we went to the final. Oba was golden boot. Even Lacazette was scoring goals. Now, let's finish fifth now a point of top four. This guy, the praise that would happen, and rightfully so for Arteta, I've changed my mind a little bit on him, but he would be praised. Oh, do you know what? He's done an amazing job. Now, uh, uh, Emery's gone. Listen, you can make up whatever. Oh, he's brought this one in, that one in. You can't even compare their CVs. Emery is gone and won a Europa League again. With Vill- Villarreal are in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Yeah. Average team as well, man. If you look at them, their team, but they're, no, they're, they're doing well. No, no, Don't no, get no, no. You're, but you're right. But give oh. him time. Arteta finished eighth twice. We gave him time. Emery, I, all, I, all I'm saying, what he's saying is right. You can, Arteta's our manager now. We need to back who it is now. But it was very, very unfair. I think it was unfair by the media. I think because the English wasn't great. I didn't really like that. A lot of teasing. Uh, maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. He's lost the dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did, I don't remember players going to visit their mum and coming back and being stripped from captaincy. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> these things going on. But it's fair what he's saying. He wasn't given time. He wanted Partey before. He actually said to Arsenal, get me Partey. Get me, who was it? He wanted Partey. Zaha. Zaha. This is what he uh, said. Did you get uh. me that? They came back with Pepe. Terrera, and then they did. They didn't get to party. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. if they would have given him what they want, I think it would have been a different um, thing. But so what he's saying is true. It is true what he's saying. Yeah. But we still have to back our manager. I, I think there's a good point that you made there. That like the fact that he came in after um, Wenger, like the, the fact that he came in under, yeah, yeah, that 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 was a. And because of that, it made it very difficult for him because everything was going to be analysed. Do you know what I'm saying? When Arteta came in, we were in a stage where we don't want to keep on chopping and changing. We need stability. So he got a bit more time, you know. Um, I kind of feel that I didn't... I could, he made... I mean, bringing in Socrates, I couldn't forgive him for that, to be fair. He didn't bring yeah. in Socrates. Remember, we had... And, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. telling and, him what to do. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, and that's a, the transfers. That's, yeah, so that's, that's another point. Thing. I was, Yeah, that's another point as well, That a, a good point. Like, Arteta's been given maybe nearly full control, you know, even with decisions on transfers, etc. So the structure's changed as well. Um, and obviously the structure for Emery wasn't really working. Like you said, he wanted X and he got Y. So that wasn't working. So there were some there were some things that were going against him. I, I fully agree with that. Um, but you know, we're never gonna know. I think they're still beating by Munich as we speak right now. They're beaten um, by Munich, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they've beaten them, but they were winning one nil. So um yeah, yeah. We yeah. still are, yeah, yeah. So he's doing his thing. But you know, we it's like we're down in the dumps. We've got what how many games to go, man? Nine games to go. Like this this ain't <clears> over yet. 
And we're, we're, it's, it's, we're going on like we're de- defeated, but we're, we're going to keep it doom and gloom for a second because I want to talk that's about... because we've been in this position, JR. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It feels like deja vu, doesn't it? As Arsenal fans, and I think that's what we're all dreading, and that's what we've all been dreading for the last few weeks, thinking like and mm. praying that no, this ain't this ain't a um like this ain't a flash in the pan. Like yeah. this is actually like we are turning the corner, we are yeah. on the way, and then this result kind of just makes us go, is this in hope or expectation now? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A, yeah, no, hundred percent. It was it was a worrying result. Sorry. Um, I'm going to talk about, I want to talk about what they call him, like a threat at the moment. Um, so, you know, the guy's got <laughs> one goal in four months. Um, he did get a hat-trick, I, I understand, against Brentford, B. Um, but in the Premiership, he's just not really cutting it. And uh, to be fair, he seemed like an isolated figure against Crystal Palace. Um, you know, well, Crystal Palace controlled him. Uh, Marcelo, um, is there... Do we have an issue here? Um, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you worried? Uh, should we have played even Martinelli? Or should we look at other options in, in that number nine position? The likes of Martinelli or Pepe. I know he was um, ill um, against Crystal Palace. But yeah, talk to me about Lacazette. Yeah. Um, it's tough, man, because he really started to turn it around a bit after Alba left, he kind of stepped up, but it's, it's getting a little bit harder to justify um, more recently because he's just, if you're not scoring goals, you need to at least be a problem for center backs, right? Like you need to make them tired. You need to push them around. You need to run them ragged. And he's not really doing any of that because of everything he's being asked to do elsewhere. So I'm kind of worried that he's just burning himself out at this point. Like he looks like he's out of gas. You know, the <laughs> tank is pretty empty. <laughs> and so, but the thing is, like, I still don't know if, you know, if he puts Marinelli in, I don't think that he's going to change the whole way that we play, you know, offensively. So, it's hard for me. Like I would like to, I'd maybe be interested in seeing Marinelli play instead of him. I would entertain that idea. Um, but I just don't know if he's like, that's still risky to assume that Marinelli is going to magically get the goals we need with nine games left from striker. Cause he still hasn't looked that confident at, at striker yeah. as much as he does on the left. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's tough. Because let, let's be fair to um, Lacazette, you know, we he hasn't contributed goals, but barring the Crystal Palace match, which I think everyone had a nightmare, the guy does get stuck in. You know, he's got seven assists this season as well. Um, he is that pivot in a way. He kind of links up play. We've seen him link up play with the likes of Odegaard, Saka, Smith Rowe. Um, but... He's just not scoring though, man. He just can't play the back of the net, bro. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, so the bear, the bear, is that? Would you, would you, would you look to change things about? What, what, what's my you ask, this, listen, listen I, from the beginning. Look, <laughs> bro, what I'm what did you I think, for the last five minutes, I, bro? I think, waiting for I this. think no. I think I think the Arsenal fans we're just very evenly pleased. Like honestly, like. La- Lacazette, look, there's no risk in dropping this guy. <laughs> there's no risk. If if, if you <laughs> yeah, all this look, all this huffing and puffing, and I've said this all season. I've been told it's being disrespectful against the lesser teams. Yeah, it looks good. He works hard and stuff like that. Listen, look, the same 1992 football law has moved on. I'm not saying that you can't work hard and press. It has to be done. Arteta is supposed to be this great coach. A lot of people say he's a very good coach at Man City. You know, Sterling, everybody are saying that he's a good coach. Martinelli can finish. You know that Martinelli... Can he get stuck in, though? Can he get stuck in, though? Can Hold he on, get, what do you want? Do you want goals or play? do you want people's shin pads being kicked in? Look, we, look, we're in a situation where we need goals, bro. Look, all this, but would he not suit playing... the style of play, though, in that number nine position, in the way Arteta sets us out? Will he have to adapt suit our style it, of play? Yeah. Hold on. This is what I'm trying, but we have to. What is what did the style of play do on Monday? 
And this style of play that we've been playing, <laughs> may, may I add, bar, bar the Watford game, that's the only game I sat down and said, I think we can really wash this team by about three or four goals. I'm mm. not denying the performances have been good for I'm not complaining because we're winning three, we're getting three points. But let's not sit here and think that our feet has been up watching all of these games like we're peppering teams and putting them away. Lacazette is, in front of goal, is, is impotent. No disrespect to him. He's been huffing and puffing all season. And I knew we we're going to get to this stage. And that's what I said. People were arguing about the Obber thing. Obber's off form. Obber's this. Exactly what Kerr just said just now. You need to bring an option off the bench. I'm not panicking from the result, you know. The result happens. Look, yeah. sometimes you get beaten. What I'm doing, I'm looking in my fridge and I've got a full house party coming and I ain't got enough yeah. food to see yeah. me food. Marcelo's yeah. telling me he's bringing six girls from the States. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> Marcelo, you didn't tell me this now. I've only got two pizzas. Do you know what I mean? Now, you're asking yourself, we've got a home game against Brighton, mm-hmm. away at Southampton, yeah? And then we've got United, Big Chelsea. Game. Bro, who's, who is scoring them goals? If you take Saka out, he ain't... Listen, I'm panicking now with it. Laka... That's what I said. Coming back, I'm going to jump off. But this is the thing is, don't talk about Oba. Don't talk about Oba. All I said, listen, you've had your beef. That's fine. You're going at the end of the season. That's fine as well. But you were the captain. You're the highest paid player at the club. We still need you. The young boys still look up to you. Yeah, you come late. I just said, let bygones be bygones, Arteta. Just drop it and use him to come off the bench. Because now, if Oba was there, at least we could say, you know what, he has been a bit off form, but maybe one or two of those chances he could have finished. Teams are looking at us now thinking, if we shut down this lacquer who's only scored one goal in four months, I'm yeah. looking around, they ain't got no one. That's that's what you're doing. You're looking in, honestly. We but got you, no you got, you, it, to be fair though, in in that match, we, Pepe was ill, so he was he would have been an option to bring on you know, and I thought he, he could have had a good match against um, the likes of Crystal Palace. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he's he's an awkward player. He, he's or he's a player you that you don't Laka. know what he's gonna do. Huh? Oh, you talk about Pepe. Oh, you talk about yeah, Pepe yeah, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. But you need listen. Martinelli is is not going to be a risk. And to be fair, we're in a situation now. The squad is thin, and we need to. If you keep doing the same thing again, it's called insanity, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. keep putting Lacazette there with you know his head all sweating and and he's puffing and puffing after 10 minutes if you i cannot watch it anymore i honestly i can't do i can't do it anymore i don't yeah. care about working hard we're gonna have to change and adapt martinelli up there sling on pepe or or smith roll and let's give these teams something to think about because it was he listen Vieira done his job homework but to be fair when you think about it he just shut 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 down parte yeah shut up the wide like they don't even well. give yeah you physically you, he's not going to do anything you know, but I did warn people about lack of threat, and now you're using these quotes. And I warned you about this from the beginning of the season. It's not good enough, bro. It's not yeah. good enough. Yeah. So w- w- where does this lead us now? Can you see the screen? Mm-hmm. We're looking at the remaining fixtures um, towards the end of the season. Um, obviously, we're both on 54 points. Um, you know, Tottenham and Arsenal. I'm talking about Tottenham are currently in fourth position. You know, they got that five-one win. Looking at our remaining games. Obviously, we've got the game in hand as well. Um, Kerr, is it? Is there or anyone? Is it? Is there slight concern um, looking at who Tottenham have got left to play? Um, Apart from Leeds, from Leeds, that's it. Yeah, I'm looking at Leeds, and I'm thinking that's the only three points I can guarantee us mm. getting. The mm. rest are hard worse. games. Yeah, the rest are hard. The rest are hard games. Um, right, and at home, they haven't. I don't think they've won in five or something. They ain't scored in five or huh. something crazy. No, they haven't. But they seem to get up for it against us. Mm. They're mm. another one of them teams that seem to raise it against us. Um, yeah. just like Palace have been. Um, do you, do you think Aston Villa is it? Go on, bro. Go on, bro. Sorry. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, no. I was just gonna say I'm looking at them two teams' um, fixtures, right? And although mm. ours is the hardest, yeah. And obviously, this this um, last result has kind of put a bit of a dampener on our thing, and it's killed our um, it's killed our leeway that we had. We had a bit of a buffer with that game in hand, and that's knocked it out. Now, really, that's not the game we wanted that leverage to disappear. 
really we wanted to be holding that going into that Chelsea yeah. game or the yeah. Man United game, ideally. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to try and get the three points out of Palace, Brighton and Southampton and then keep that buffer, have that game um, still in hand when we're facing Chelsea or whatever. But now that's been eaten up. So looking at it, we've got the more difficult fixtures. The only thing I would say is I'm hoping, one, that we get up a little bit. We, we, we shouldn't need any encouragement to get up for the bigger games. Two, I'm hoping that Spurs being Spurs, Spurs lose the games that they're expected to win more mm. times than not. Mm. So I'm kind of hoping, and I'm being deadly serious now, I'm, instead of it being out of outright confidence in us to go and get the results and the points that we need, mm. I'm sitting here still more looking at Spurs and think, and hoping that, looking at their fixtures, that they're going to shoot themselves in the foot yeah, yeah. Rather than us being the ones that are gonna um, rampage our way to the finish line. But Kurt, that... don't you think that's even? But Kurt, even what what, what you've just said just now, mm. this is why I'm concerned. Mm. We've got all these games in hand, and we oh, we had quite a few games. We in had, hand. yeah. No, and we were fourth. Mm. Now we're still looking and watching what Tottenham is doing. Yeah, because we we, get... we lost this that first why... one against Liverpool, which was obviously Expected obviously we all hoped fair. we wanted to get something out of it, but we all mm. kind of wrote that off, kind of, well, in that yeah. respect. But then, obviously, then we had one more game in hand, and that's the one I'm talking about. This is the one with the yeah. Palace one, where we couldn't we we couldn't afford to really throw that away so cheaply. And we have. Because now, the thing is, if we'd have beat, if we'd have beat Palace, we'd have had Tottenham looking at their games thinking, right, Arsenal were on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, Arsenal were on it. We have to continue doing our thing. Mm. And I would have been more hopeful that with that pressure on them, that they would be more likely to slip up. But I feel okay. like yeah, with yeah, us losing yeah. that game now, I feel it's like giving them momentum. It's given them momentum because they were hoping that that they 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 went into this weekend knowing, look, we can only go and do our job. They done it, and they done it convincingly at that. So now they're buzzing. So then when they then watched our result, whoa, doubly buzzing. So now they're gassed. They're gassed beyond belief so now i, think, I just I think, feel like yeah that's gonna yeah, work I'm, against us yeah listen i'm 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 looking at the fish obviously i'll, I'll let marcelo um speak your game if we don't get six points in the next two games <laughs> kiss it goodbye if we don't get six points in those yeah. two if we don't beat brighton and southampton and get six points from here we, we need those then we can well. we can start kissing this goodbye and then we're gonna have a full as I said, inquiry about what's happened because yeah, from the position we're in to now, if we don't get six points, so let's just pretend that this was a blip on Monday. So hopefully I see older guard came out and said, look, we just got to get back to the training ground and do better. That's fine. But we got to pray that Villa put in a little bit of a better performance against Spurs than they did against us. But those two games, you can only take care of yourself. If we don't get six points from those games, and I think them games are going to be hard against Southampton and Brighton because I know exactly what they're going to do. They're just going mm. to really, really make it difficult and be very, very physical with us. And at the end of the day, it looked like it worked on Monday. They were at the game watching the game as well. They're not silly. The scouts are there listening, watching the game, tactically mm. thinking, okay, we can yeah. get this team. And yeah. if we don't get that, then it's, it's, it's a wrap. The only yeah. good thing about that is that we're at home, so hopefully our fans ain't gonna let them let exactly. them do that. That's because, what I'm hoping for. Yeah, because I feel like w where they didn't have that energy and whatever at the beginning of that game, no way it, at the Emirates would the crowd have allowed that. Mm, but let's see. Yeah. What's your yeah, thoughts, Marcelo? I agree with everything that's been said, especially the fact that if we don't get six out of six points the next couple games, then it's completely out of our control. Um, barring you know, Spurs also choke big time, and or Villa steps up, Brighton steps up. Um, the thing though is that I, you know, before the injuries, I wasn't worried about you know comparing mm. anything. Like Dang. I felt really good. I wasn't even that worried about Spurs. And like Nabir said, you know, losses happen. I was actually surprisingly quick to recover from the L, you know, I was devastated about the injuries. Like mm. when I woke up Tuesday morning, all I was thinking about was how bad is this tyranny situation? Yeah. How bad is party? And now 
I have significantly less faith in us finishing in the top four because of the injuries. So like looking at the fixture list, I mean, it's already been proven with us, with Man U, with Spurs, all three teams. You know, we all know games in hand mean nothing. And but injuries mean everything. So now I'm like, shit, how is Arteta about to set us up? And how much are the guys that we depend on going to be able to step up? You know, like I, I really like Sambi, but we didn't sign him to be the guy to get us in the top four this season. We signed him to be playing in the Champions League for the next 10 years. He's not supposed to be the guy that's oh, yeah, coming yeah. in to save us. So it goes back to what Nabir also said earlier of like, you know, we, we sign guys for the future, but now that we're very much in the present and we can't really look past the game ahead of us, it's really tough. So I do think it's out of our control now. Uh, that's a, I can't say that much. I think that it's significantly less in our control now, even though we have a game in hand. So I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Marcelo, do you think now, though, that this Arteta's insistent, insistence of streamlining this squad has bit us in the arse now? This is what I did fear from the beginning when people were getting shipped, ship him out, ship him out. Mm. Oh, he's looking at me funny, ship him out. Ship. And I thought, listen, we're not in a position. Listen, when, when we're on a different level, you can start shipping people out. And I'm not saying that people haven't got bad attitudes. Because I'm not saying, because listen. No, a certain man was, he was right to get rid of, isn't it? Certain man is right to get rid yeah, of. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But yeah, there was right. certain man that could be used, in it? That he was a little bit too quick, like a bit hasty. Like the Maitland Niles one I said from, early yeah like, yeah 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 That's i didn't understand like, you didn't need to go roma and not so early in the window during african cup of nations and things like mm -hmm. that like mm -hmm. and there was always going to be a point in the season where like you said some of these things could um bite us in the ass but we i think we was all hoping that that weren't really going to be the case because we're looking at our squad and we all knew it was thin um but i feel like yeah that that that's that's definitely going to be a bit of a hindrance because there yeah. was some of those players that didn't, you know, like some of them, your Chambers, Class Natch, all them kind of man, you know what, go about your business, man. Like, you man ain't really going to be in the squad anyway. But certain man where we're light in certain positions, like midfield and places like that, like Agreed. up front, didn't necessarily need to be so hasty. The but, only thing, the only thing for me, mm. I agree to a certain extent that we maybe, we did leave ourselves thin. The thing for me, though, is when you look at the people we let go, I don't look at any of those names and think, oh, yeah, they would step in at this moment and give me a lot of confidence in our ability to finish in the top four. I don't see anyone he let go, including I hear you, but Ainsley, Ainsley is a bit of a problem solver, though, in my opinion. He's not playing at Roma. He's not even playing no, at Roma. He's that's true. That's true. Right now. But when he was, no, but, but when you think, yeah. before he no. left here, though, before I think that's doing him a bit of dis in, uh, disjustice, though. To be, yeah, a bit of a disservice. Because if you, you think, what? yeah, for Maitland Niles, because I feel like yeah. before, because, all right, he's not playing at Roma. Cool. I, I, I haven't watched him enough at Roma to be able to get too much into that. But all I can say is what I've seen uh, from Maitland Niles during his Arsenal career. And I've seen enough from him in his Arsenal career to turn around and say he could do a job for us in various different positions as and when should it be needed. Now, we was all just speaking about the Tavares situation, for example. I remember Maitland Niles playing left back in our cup run where we went and won the FA Cup and locking up some of the best wide midfielders in the league mm -hmm. on that run to do that okay. and things like that. So, I agree. I agree. It's just that that was a back three. He was a good wing back. And I, I get that's that. true. But, but he's a I, problem I solver. He's an extra, he's an extra he balled, that he you can use. To I, I, I agree with the fact that he's a problem solver. But the only thing I would say is if a man comes to you and says, allegedly this is what happened, that he wants to leave, give me the but opportunity. That's because he wasn't I want being given... He wasn't, he wasn't being involved. We, but we, but we were, no, ne but we were but never no. going to. We were never going to no, get him look, like we can make up. He could have played during January. Are you telling me he the, couldn't the, have played any of them games during January? Yeah, yeah maybe in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. African nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, his last game for Arsenal, he was man of the match. Yeah, his last game. And how was he? And how was he repaid after that? Not seen any kind of minutes after that. So I don't think. JR is, is yeah, I'm, I'm not having that one because Jacka said he also wanted to leave. 
So, yeah. At the end of the day, there's a few mm. plays that said, listen, if we want to, I know people don't really want to skirt around. Yeah, Kurt wants to beat me up, fine. you know. Kurt, don't beat me up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, okay, okay. People, people want to skirt around it, but if we still had Maitland Niles and yeah. Oba, I'm saying you guys won't be, you can't now come and tell me, oh, wow, I would have no confidence going into the Brighton game with Oba. No, no way. Keep playing Laka. Um, guys, you, you're not kidding me. He would have definitely have been a good option. The thing is, Oba, was, uh, he wasn't doing much when he was here, but... He scored more like... goals than Laka's there. Yeah, still <laughs> <It's> mad, but <laughs> no, no, because no, because Marcelo, you said that oh, uh, Maitland Niles, he ain't even starting for Roma. Okay, so by that same logic, Oba is banging for Barca. I'm not saying that he would have been banging, but by that logic, no, because Oba was like playing me. every game for us and he was playing like shit. So it's and he's very... playing in a different system. It's a different system. He didn't agree with the system. Unless Arteta was going to change the system to suit um, Obama Yang, it wasn't working. We saw it week in, week out. But listen, so can I just, before you, you keep... say something, yeah. is, is the screen gone? Is it, is it just us now? Yeah. yeah. It's just fake. All right, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 go yeah. on, bro. No, and this is what Kerr said before. The mm. same way that, oh, um, Maitland Niles is, is, is not in that first team. Maitland Niles, he's not. This is, you need to account for situations and think, okay, what is going to happen in the future? The squad is thin. Just because you're not, just, okay, so for example, if you now bring on a Chris Wood or a Lukaku, who ain't playing great, I'm just saying it's a different style of striker mm. and player. You need to be asking people more questions. Marcelo, you were at the Wolves game. We were there. We were a bit stagnant up front. He thought, okay, I'm going to bring Pepe on. Now, Pepe is not part of the system. Let's just be real. It don't work with Arteta and Pepe. He doesn't play well every game. Yeah, That's yeah, why he doesn't yeah. start. Agree. Agree. But because you bring him on, you're, you're asking the different. defender different questions. questions so I'm not yeah. saying that this argument of Oba yeah, 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 yeah. is not in there. I'm saying you need to Good ask point. more questions. Yeah, That's yeah. it. I'm not saying yeah, you're yeah. playing great. But yeah. I'm saying for Brighton, they're probably thinking, I can deal with Lacazette. If Oba's there, they're probably thinking, oh, shit, he's off form, but he is still... That's that's all I'm saying. We've left ourselves in. If we don't make top four, there has to be an inquiry. You're coming back for this. a minute. Yeah, yeah, you're coming back mm. for him. Uh, I, mm. I, I see you. I see you, bro. <laughs> that's real, that's real. If, if, we, if we talk about Sambi, obviously, it looks like Partey potentially could be injured. Um I pray Short not. There's no news. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ho- hopefully not. Be quiet on that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think it's. I think it'll be a couple weeks max. It doesn't sound like it's crazy, oh, but I don't yeah. think he'll play Saturday. As long as yeah, he's yeah, back yeah. for the big games, the Chelsea games, and then ones there. We need him. Yeah, we need him back to Chelsea. We did. We do. We do. But I mean, like, if any of the games we can get by, it's going to be these two out of our schedule, isn't it? And that's compared to. Compared to the Chelsea, United, West Ham, that little run, like, I, do you do yeah. you trust do you trust Sambi Kurt for for the likes of Brighton and, and Southampton? Then, do you know what? Yeah, to I think one of his poorer games that he played was against Brighton. I think <laughs> that was probably one of his last starts for us. I think when we played Brighton, that yeah, yeah, he had, he had, he had, he had a was shocking. Yeah, I, was shocking that game as well. Yeah, yeah, like there was a couple of shocking performances, but yeah, like I think he was one of the ones anyway that got a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, yeah. up in that game or whatever. But mm. do you know what? He come in. Sambi's a good player in it, um, and I feel like he's going to be a very good player for Arsenal in the future. Very mm. good. But I just feel like obviously it's a bit early for him at the minute, um, and I feel like it, there's been a bit of unfair pressure put on him because of the position that he's been put in by the club in terms of. You know, he's expected to step up now. Mm. Partey's out, a player of that stature and calibre. And now he's got to come in and carry the team on his back now, basically, yeah, yeah, and do yeah, the yeah. job that Partey done. I feel yeah. like that's un- unfair to ask any player, really. But he's done that um, before. I mean, he, the guy player. had to come in against Man City. Do you know what I'm saying? At the beginning he, of the season and the beginning what, the of his game, Arsenal he, career. He yeah, didn't play. Remember, he got dropped. If you remember he correctly, he played one. well in the two games before that and then got dropped for the City game. Dropped, and we was yeah. all like, what? And he played... Oh, that was the first time Odegaard yeah, played yeah, yeah, in the... Yeah. But he had to start the at the beginning of the season, right? He's one of yeah, the... he played the first couple of games <clears throat> and whatever. Yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and he played mm-hmm. after the City game as well. But that was the mm. first game they dropped him. Okay. Um, okay. okay. I dropped him for yeah. this season. But look, he's a good player. Even his little cameo that he come on for party on 
um, the weekend. If you, I, I saw a little thingy of his highlights, and he, yeah, yeah, he, I saw he, that. What he done? He done bitch, you know. He actually yeah, he done did. like yeah, obviously on the, the ground. Was good, thing, though. Editing was good though. Huh? The editing was good though. Yeah, it must have been, boy. It must have been. <laughs> but he looked, he looked like he done his bit. But look, I'm I just hoping you. that he can come in and and do a job. I don't think he's going to be able to come and do. I think this is going to require another shift back in our system. I don't feel like it's going to be a thing where we can just entrust him with the part A role to have to be a lone six and marshal yeah. that whole midfield on his own like part A can do. So I feel like it's going to be a situation where we're going to see the. Probably the the revert back to type of Shaka dropping deep, and I feel like where we're going to be playing Tavares as well. I feel like we're going to proper see the revert back to type of yeah. Shaka covering left back spaces. Yeah, while, and, while Tavares is on and things, we're going to play with a double pivot again. And that's, that's what the I thing see. is that I hundred percent agree. And part of why Sambi struggled first half of the season is because Shaka was out, so Sambi had to do the left back thing. That's yes, not his game. Yeah, you're Brighton right. Brighton game. He had to shift over to left back because mm-hmm. Shaka was injured, and that's just mm-hmm. not his thing. So I think now that Shaka is going to be his partner, he'll be mm-hmm. more effective in doing his party thing because that's more, more his comfortable style on the right play. side as well. That's yeah. what he'll grow into. He's not there yet. Obviously, he's mm-hmm. far from it. But I think Shaka will take off a little bit of that uh, responsibility in defending, so he'll be able to focus more on. Getting the ball forward. He'll probably be the deeper the one winning. He'll be the deeper the, one now. The Shaka. thing is, the thing is, and I hear what you guys are saying about, you know, Xhaka having to, you know, take care of Sambi. But did, if I was a parent, I, I'm basically leaving my child with Bart Simpson uh, to babysit <laughs> for the night because, I mean, of all players to be taken care of, you know, Jack has got the keys to your house. You know what I mean? And you're thinking there's going to be some sort of half house party or something. I, ain't gonna lie, bro, I agree. I was just thinking I'm, Jack I'm, is going to get it off. I know. But that's where we are, though, isn't it? That's where yeah. we are. That's where that we've is, been all season. No, but Kurt and Marcel, I'm thinking, yeah, it does sound good, but why am I still panicking? You know, so you're like, Let's oh, yeah, bro, it's still a panic. Yeah. It's still a panic. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just I'm saying that's the only way I can see El Nini us. there, mate, rather than him. It, to take care of him. I would uh, you know actually. what? That's not a bad yeah. shot. I forgot about El Nini, you know? I forgot about El Nini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, about know, yeah, yeah. you know where El Nini, you know, he, he's the sort of player that he drives. Yeah, he drives 20 miles per hour in a 20 road like even yeah, there's no yeah. cameras. He's like, I'm not doing anything. Give him the job to do, innit? Yeah, mm-hmm. he's ready to drive Miss Daisy. That guy that's, just does things at 20 miles per hour. In that's, 20, real yeah. that's real facts. That's real facts. So, 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 boy, you made some good points there. I want to, I want to know. We're gonna finish up shortly, but are we in a two horse race between us and Spurs, or are Man United part of the party? Do you, do you agree that Man United are still in it, or would you? Would they you gained the that, point really? on us, bro. They gained the point. I know, on but us then I'm weekend. looking at. I was watching them play the other day. I'm looking at their final fixtures as well, and and the difficult games they've got. And I, I'm just thinking. I don't. I personally feel that it's between us and Spurs in 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 trying to get this top four. If I'm honest, I don't think Man United have got this confidence at the moment to actually play well enough to continue and get consistent points. But that may just be me. You may. You guys may have a different opinion. Mm, no, I, I totally agree. Listen, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be that consistent for the rest of the season. Yeah, I didn't want to say that, Kerr, but <laughs> thank you very much, bro. I'm just being real, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just being real in it. Like I'm, I'm as you man know me in it. I can be as um, confident and whatnot in my team as the best of us, but yeah. I'm, I'm also a realist. So I'm yeah. urging on the side of caution at the moment. I don't hey. reckon any. I don't reckon any team is out of it. I know, obviously, Man United are near. the way. I didn't even talk no, no, about know, West Ham to be fair. No, I know they're nearly out of it. Let's just be. I, I, I get. I get that that sentiment, but. Um, I tell you what we can't do is start now thinking it's a two horse race and stuff because this is where we're going to start feeling a little bit inadequate you know what I mean and right now let's just be real the way what happened on Monday is like it never happens to me personally but we're literally at the urinals and we've looked to the man at the left <laughs> 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 man's you feeling know, incompetent now, yeah, yeah the, the way we're feeling we're we lost thinking, a bit of confidence you know, yeah uh, you know the missus did say i was uh, <laughs> I don't know if she's lying to me now. and this is this is the questions that we're doing right now and i yeah. tell you the only way to do it obviously playing semi-pro at a particular level no professional but 
you have to take care of your game. This literally, we can't even be watching what's going on because if we start doing that, we're going to start feeling not confident. Because let's just be Each real. Game as it that fight, that five one, what Spurs done? I'm not going to lie. For it shouldn't be affecting me. It should but have been. It, 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 yeah. it did affect, it, it, and that's it, because it. yeah. And this is the crunch time now. This is where he has to earn his money. So we literally have to say, let's block it out. Nothing yeah. exists but Brighton. Nothing. There's no point looking yeah. where we can pick points up. We need to be bright. Once we finish, then we travel up to the south coast of Southampton. When we start adding these things on, yeah, yeah you're just gonna you're gonna panic. You just need to be locked in, focused, game by game. That's the only way we're gonna yeah. get out of it. Because yeah. when we start thinking who else is in the race, they've all got better firepower than us. I'm just being real, yeah. man. You've got better yeah. firepower oh, that's than exactly us. Where I was just gonna go. Oh, you know what? To be fair, so, though, to be but exactly this, this be fair. Saying. If 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 Kane, if Tottenham lose Kane. That's a big loss for them as well. But bro, you know we've been playing it's a big if too, so. isn't it? It's yeah, a big if. Like, he usually gets that ankle. Usually gets, yeah, 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 yeah. But he usually gets that ankle injury. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> wishing that on him. The last two seasons, he hasn't now. Last season, yeah, he didn't. And this season, he hasn't. Okay. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at that, that Man United up front, the, the squad. And uh, yeah, you lot are going to think I'm crazy, but... Cavani, he he don't he, he's, he's he's not playing. He's he's not, not, yeah, he's not. He, he he's not playing. Play. He's, he's not, not playing. Play. Play. Yeah, yeah, no, he's yeah. Not yeah. Play. Rashford, whoever he plays or not, he's not there. Like he's not. He's not doing that. Be careful, that that. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna clip this before he haunts us at the Emirates. <laughs> before he haunts our lives at the Emirates, and he likes to do that. Yeah, yeah, Be careful. Yeah. No, but I'm saying Arteta's sniffing. So be careful. Ah, bro, allow it, man. Nah, I'll be first. I wouldn't be happy with that. I wouldn't be happy with Rashford. That's We'd be happy with Rashford over Laka. No, bro, it's not over a Laka thing, bro. I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm looking at to improve. Bro, let's get to Champions team. League so we can start talking about where yeah, we're yeah, shopping. Because yeah, yeah. cool, you, cool. you, <laughs> you, you might not get in the Ferrari brochures, and Van has not even got paid. Like, let's 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 get that check in. Real You're fat, the sort of yeah, man's gonna be driving a dusty Cortina down the road. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about, about the to... Lambo. Bro, you're spending your advance yeah, you're money right, you're right. You're and stuff. You don't even sort of record yeah, like, that. Let's true, just relax true, and true, then we can true, start. True, you know? It's true, it's true, it's true. Right, we're, we're going to end it here, but I'm gonna. I'm just going to ask it. Firstly, I'm going to ask about the, the matches this weekend. Um, only two matches, obviously Brighton and Arsenal, Arsenal and Brighton. And I want to know, do you guys think the Villa and Spurs match, do you think that's a banana skin for them? Um, so I want to ask your, your predictions for both matches. We'll start off with yourself. Um, see, like I said, man, Brighton's always a difficult game for us. I can't remember the last time we've gone to Brighton and an easy day. No, but we're at home, though. We're at home, though. We're at home. We're at home. We are at home. Yeah. Oh, 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 I get it because the way I've just said it, going yeah. to Brighton. Um, I just mean playing Brighton, full stop, in it. Home, away, mm. whatever the case is. You know, like styles, in it. Like they say, styles make fights and whatever, in it. I mm. feel like the way Brighton play always kind of plays into our hands. I mean, we always play into their hands a little mm. bit. I feel like um, I feel like Potter always seems to know how to set up against us. So I feel like we're going to be in for a hard game. But I'm hoping we're at home. We're at the Emirates. We've been embarrassed by Crystal Palace only a couple of days ago. So I'm hoping that Arteta has um, put a rocket up the boys mm. and that they're going to be coming out with a point to prove on what day are we playing them? Saturday. That's Saturday, Saturday, yeah. Yeah. Saturday yeah. 3 o'clock game, yeah? Okay, so, yeah. yeah, so do you know what? That that bodes well. Saturday, 3 o'clock, uh, uh, just at home, I'm going to say we're going to win. I'm going to go 3-1. Okay. Okay. For Arsenal, but Tottenham wise against Villa at Villa, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I believe yeah. it is a potential banana skin. It is a potential banana skin. Um, Villa ain't been playing well no. recently. Um, obviously lost against us, lost against was it was it Leeds the other day or Wolves or someone? I can't remember. Wolves, Wolves, Wolves. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Wolves are a good team, so mm. but yeah, they're, they're not in the best of form. But I'm hoping that they've got to turn that around at some point, right? And um, they've got enough quality in their team to be able to at least put in a decent shift. So I'm hoping that they make it pretty difficult for... What's the score, bro? Them. 
2-1 Villa. Quan. Okay, okay. Right in the bird, I just saw you falling asleep there, so I'm going to ask you. No, no, I wasn't. I thought you were doing a curl, bro. You can't have it two weeks on the show. Enough talking about sleep, (laughs) Sonny. I don't need reminding. (laughs) Yeah, no, no. It's just, um, yeah, Brighton game is going to be a tough game. I want it to be easy, it's not. I think, I I reckon we we can win this 2-0. Yeah, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, and it's not going to be yeah. the thing is, it's not going to be a very comfortable 2 0 because you know, this is not Arsenal this season. This is a thing mm. where I do miss, you know, these things. So I think, you know, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for 2 0. If it doesn't, JR, you're going to get a voice note. Marcelo, <laughs> you're going to get a voice note on Insta as well. So this just, <laughs> Kurt, you really know what it is. Telepathic, my brother. Telepathic. These no two, they, they're going to get, yeah, they're going to get a voice note. And, you say you're yeah, coming yeah, for yeah, our guy, yeah? Certain, yeah, no, we're coming for you. But no, I think I think we can do a 2-0. I yeah. reckon we can do that. In terms of Villa, I, I, I want to be realistic. I think it will be 1-1. Or two two, I'm trying to. I hope Villa can have a fantastic game. Maybe yeah. Danny Ings and stuff like that. But the That's way what I'm are, the way Spurs are playing at the moment, and it is perfect counter attacking football. The three yes. five, you know. Yeah. So for the, I mean, so for me, I reckon I can see them picking them off. You know, um, but I mean, a one one. I've got a funny feeling. Maybe you know, one one. Um, and at least we can claw back a, a few more points. But it could probably be free now to Spurs after three minutes or t- 10 minutes. And I'm like, look, look, yeah. yeah so, yeah, I reckon 1-1 one, one and 2-0 um, no for us. Okay. Marcelo. Two goals in Lacazette. Ah. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, Positivity. Two goals for Lacazette. I'm saying that. Bro, he had an it, bro. Did you say two bro. goals for him? He yeah, did. yeah, yeah. Double easy. You heard yeah. right. Two you goals. heard right. Yeah. Not even just <laughs> scoring the game, man. Said two, like two, two but... you know you're yeah. scoring. I actually have the exact. <laughs> I have the exact same uh, predictions as the beer. I think it'll be two nil for Arsenal. Um, and again, we haven't really had many comfortable wins this season. The only one that immediately comes to my mind is Leeds when we spanked them. That's true. That was that's the only true. one, but that's when Leeds yeah. was like the most. They were the worst yeah, yeah, yeah. team in the league at that point. One of them. Um, yeah, so an, an uncomfortable 2-0 win for us. And I, I'm thinking 2-2 because I do see goals in that Villa Spurs game. Mm. Um, and I also see some poor defending. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that they can take a couple points off them. But I don't see Villa winning just because they have been in pretty bad form. But we got to hope for the best, you know. Um, as long as we win, man, that's all yeah, we can ask exactly. for. That's exactly. all we can ask for right now. Facts. Yeah. Exactly. What about you, JR? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the two 0 victory as well. Um, against mm-hmm. Brighton. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go for a Lacazette goal, or it's gonna deflect off him, or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of the Villa and Tottenham match, I'm gonna go for Villa victory. I want Let's to be go. positive here. Yeah, I want to, I want him to get the victory. And I think Callum Chambers is going to have something to do with it. He's going to cross Ooh. the ball in. That's a good shot. Remember I told you. Remember I told you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go for a 2-1 victory to Villa at home. Fingers crossed that happens. Listen, boys, it's been a pleasure um, chopping up with you guys this week. Um, people, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Until next time, people, have a good week. Come on the Arsenal. Peace. Peace. Peace.